In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make an extruded logo from a business card using Red5. Hey, here I am in Final Cut Pro about to show you how to create a 3D extruded graphic from a business card using Red5. So let's say some company asked you to create a 3D graphic of their logo, but they didn't give you like some electronic media or any artwork like that. You just have a business card. Well, you could try to recreate it from hand from that, but Red5 can actually make the whole thing automated for you. So I'm going to show you how that works. So I've applied it to this footage firm clip of the Boston skyline here. Here is the media in red. And let's import that business card. Barker Electric Service Incorporated. OK. So you can see it's been scanned. you got texture, noise, all the good scan items. And what we want to do is make this card as easy to trace as possible. We're going to use red's vector trace tool. And I'm going to trace the luminance channel on the card. I could trace alpha, red, green, blue channels too, but you know I don't need to. I can also adjust tolerance, threshold, and pre-blur amount, and I've already set those to what I think are good starting points. Okay, so first, let's make this card HD sized. That way, we don't have to worry about, you know, having enough points or anything to get from. Next, let us put some filters on this card so we can hide some of the noise. Uh, first of which, let me do a desaturation, because we don't need color. And let us increase the contrast as well. OK, so we have a little bit of noise here. Uh, let's see if the you know settings I have in my vector trace will take care of that. And I think this is a good place to start. So, Vector Trace. Select the Pencil tool, and then Alt-Shift, and click and drag over your logo. And check it out. Instant Spline Track in my timeline, very nicely traced from the business card. OK, so we can hide the business card now, and we can also hide the background. Now what we want to do is make this a 3D shape and then smooth it out a little bit. We have some rough corners here. So to make it a 3D shape, easiest part of the tutorial. Just click on this Change Track Shape button and select 3D Extrusion. And there it is, 3D shape instantly in Red 5. OK, so now that I've got my 3D shape, I can see there's some rough edges here, a little bit of sharp corners for an S and a B. So we're going to clean those up. The nice thing is, even though I changed the track shape, I'm still working from a regular 2D spline. So I can make edits to all this, and they'll update on the 3D object automatically. Uh, one other thing I want to do is actually change the style of the 3D. I'm going to go into my Styles menu here. I'm going to select No Bevels. OK, this makes the edges a lot easier to see. OK, back to the spline shape. So I'm going to zoom in, start with the B, and work my way through. It looks like we might have too many points in some of these situations here. Um, and in other cases, not enough. See, I can adjust the handles on the points that are already here. This particular point has a sharp edge to it. I'm going to get rid of that by holding Apple, clicking on the handle, and then I get another handle on the other side. Holding Alt while I click lets me adjust just that handle. And I think this point is actually unnecessary now, so I'm going to delete it. This point should be rounded, so I'm going to hold Apple again. OK, so I have a nice smooth curve on the B. Maybe bring that in a little bit. OK, good. Same thing here. I'm going to add the other handle by holding Apple when I click there. Nice and smooth. OK, now on the inside of the B here, we have some inconsistency. I want to make sure that you know, the two holes are consistent. So I'm going to delete this point, use the sharp one, make sure this handle at least is at a 90 degree angle, and then pull this point over. OK, so now the B is more consistent. Um, this part here is rounded, fully rounded now. So let's make this one rounded. Now this one has no handle, so I'm going to create a new point by clicking Alt and then clicking on the uh, spline shape. And there you can see a nice Bezier spline here. And this point, we're going to pull in a little bit and down. 
Okay, nice. So the B is complete. I'm going to leave this sharp edge here for now because I think it is kind of like a font uh, style thing. Okay, I'll spare you the tedium of watching me adjust all these splines and just cut to when I'm done. Okay, and just finishing up the S, you can see a really nice job. I didn't have to change too much, and now the curves are all nice and smooth. But to make sure, let's check our object from different angles. And here's a handy trick to uh, rotate your object. If you press E, you bring up the on-screen controls to rotate your plane, and that's a really quick way to check angles there. And you can see that the curves are nice and smoothed out. Check the tumble as well. Like, <laughs> take a bow. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so it looks uh, looks good. And to go back, I'm going to hit W. Now that we have our uh, splines the way we want them, let's start working on styles and animation. Uh, just quickly, I'm going to put a blue aluminum style on it just to work with for now. Now, you might have noticed there are still some, like, kind of, polygon edges here. We're going to clean those up last because we can do that um, using the extrusion tab using the smoothness parameter. It's only set to 6 right now so there's a little bit of uh, rough edges. When I pump that up to like in the 20s at the end it's going to look really nice. Okay so don't think I didn't notice that. I did. Alright let's re-enable our background tracks to work on some animation. Uh, let's reset the graphics card and zoom back out. Now what I want to do is have these letters fly off the business card. So let's uh, p first of all turn on keyframe mode in red, scale these down, Oop, wrong track. Select this track and scale the letters down. Okay, hey look, they line up perfectly. Let's have these with a ease in, ease out. I'm also going to rotate and tumble and change position. All right, uh, three second animation should be fine. That should be plenty of time for the public to be aware of Barker Electric Services. I want these to be hold keyframes when they're done so that they uh, don't move around too much more. It's a good position for you there. Okay, and let's spin you almost a full rotation ending on some kind of angle. Uh, let's do an angle like this. Okay, turning away from the sun, the harsh light of day. And tumbling a little bit. There we go, very nice. Okay, also going to make sure these are hold frames as well, so that when I move forward in time, they stay put. And before, I still have my nice animation. Let's hear it for animate mode in red. Okay, next let's get rid of this boring old 2D graphics card, sorry, business card, in the background and uh, make way for the 3D one. Boy, I've been mixing up those two words all day. Okay, so last keyframe there, good. Uh, let's make sure it starts, you know, at 100, yeah, and end at zero. So we are left with just the stunning 3D version of the logo. And now let's make it look a little bit cooler. That's right, even cooler by moving the lights and adding some shadows and reflections. I'm going to move this light to match where the sun is. I'm going to add another light for fill. And let's keep some of those shadows, so not too much there. All right, if I turn on, whoop, too much. If I turn on 3D shadows, the letters will cast shadows onto each other. A really cool effect. And if I go to materials and turn up the reflectivity, we will get a lot shinier letters, but what's also really cool is that if I turn on reflection map here, it'll reflect the video from my Final Cut timeline. Now again, I brought it down so it's a subtle reflection, but it's totally there and it's awesome. Okay, now that everything is set up the way I want it, now I'm going to increase my polygon count. Let's go 26, 23, sounds good, still looks great. Now let's see how it looks when it's rendered in Final Cut. Oh, you know what I should do, though? Just to be uh, complete, let's put a good old 2D title in the bottom, too. Let's not forget our roots, shall we? And let's make it a lower third. I mean, acronyms are great, but sometimes you want a good old-fashioned lower third. Okay, great. 
Now let's render this and see how it looks. Nice! There you have a 3D extruded logo from very humble beginnings on this business card. Okay, now if you liked what you saw here but you want to learn more, we have more Red Tutorials online and you can download Red 5 as a trial version for two weeks with no watermark. And that's all at BorisFX.com.